we're going to talk about progress. Progress is intrinsic to success because success has much more to do with the direction you're heading in rather than the rung of the ladder you're on. I'm keen to avoid self-help buzzwords that might talk about how you can achieve success. I will assume that you have identified your passion, you're applying your talent, and you work hard every day to achieve your heart's desire. In this case, you're already a success. The principles I'm going to discuss are a result of personal necessity in respect of me achieving my own goals and much contemplation. So success is a big topic. For the purposes of the next 10 minutes, we will define it as continual and consistent progress in your chosen genre. Okay, so let's look at some successful people and how they engage with their achievement. A caveat before I begin, I'm a huge fan of all these examples and hold their work in the highest regard. First up, Jimmy Page. This guy distilled his influences and found his own voice. For me, the hardest task for any artist. He is the master of the sublimated guitar riff. The work of Led Zeppelin is diverse and brilliant. The DNA is found in heavy metal, hip hop, and even folk. Over the last 20 years, the majority of Page's output has been remastering and reissuing the Led Zeppelin back catalog. This poses the question, is, this, is it right that the artist should curate, curate their own legacy? Nothing wrong with that in principle, but when curating your legacy inhibits making new work, that is not progress. Certainly, Page is on a high rung of the ladder, but his gaze is backwards. Let's contrast Page with Plant, his bandmate in Led Zeppelin. After the triumphant O2 show in 2007, which I urge you to check out, by the way, it is really triumphant, uh, Plant flatly refused to tour with the band, despite it being almost certainly commercially lucrative and a massive ego stroke. Instead, he goes off, he makes albums with Alison Krauss and Thiebaud Walker, Raising Sand, and last year, Lullaby and the Ceaseless Roar. Massively out of his comfort zone, but artists and fans were rewarded for this move. Absolutely progress. But, Perhaps the finest example of what I'm talking about this evening is Steve Jobs. Fired from Apple when it was a $2 billion company, the board completely disregarded the man's vision and genius. Of this time, Jobs states that the heaviness of success was replaced with the lightness of being a beginner again. He embraces freedom, this ignites his creativity, and he goes on to form Next, a computer company, and Pixar, who you might have heard of. Okay, so, Fast forward, Apple is worth a fraction of what it was when Jobs left, and the Apple board have to buy next. They tell us for software, but we all know it was for Steve. Today, it's the most valuable company on the planet, and if we consider cash and, commercial and uh, capital assets, the brand value, and the brand value, I apologize, will be the 28th most, like, sorry, a stumble has occurred. It would be the 28th, <laughs> the 28th most valuable, com valuable country on the planet. But more importantly, even than that, this man played a key role in how we all engage with information. To underline how, embrace, uh, or how uh, embracing freedom can ignite creativity, after this bit of Oasis, Noel Gallagher released a solo album that clearly demonstrates the work of a liberated man. Jobs, around the time of being fired from Apple, shows us that failure is nothing to fear. And in fact, failure, the, sorry, the path of failure ends with success. There are many examples that we can, we can look at, both on the Jimmy Page side and on the Steve Jobs side, but an honorable mention must go to the following. Keith Richards, who for fear of repeating himself, removed one of the strings from his guitar, tuned the remaining five to a G chord, and tells us that to make good music, we need five strings, three notes, two hands, and one asshole. <laughs> Ferguson, Alex Ferguson, lived by the diktat that we should never be afraid to dismantle a winning team. So where does that leave us? Dr. Steve Peters states in the book, The Chimp Paradox, that there is nothing less constructive than a self-appointed victim. Remember that. And we are all aware of the maxim of being a victim of our own success where Page and even Orson Welles, who gave a Citizen Kane at age 25, but never backed it up, were burdened by their success. Jobs, Ferguson, and someone like Michael Schumacher thrive in their continued dominance. So, how do we achieve, how do we 
sorry, how do we avoid achievement paralysis? Simple. If it ain't broke, <laughs> key moment, key moment, first time. If it ain't broke, break it, motherfuckers. <laughs> While it is important to celebrate victories, it is critical to dismantle tried and tested processes in order to progress, to understand why we succeeded, how we can succeed better and in new ways, resting on laurels and polishing the family silver achieves nothing. This is an abuse of one's talent and precisely how success suffocates. Thank you very much.